Welcome, covering my name is Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. I have breaking news coming out, being reported by Sputnik just a few minutes ago. Russian warplanes repelled Daesh, uh, Daesh offensive, that's ISIS, in Deir Ezzord, eliminating 180 terrorists, including top, uh, two top commanders. Now, what's really odd about this story is when this happened. It just isn't, didn't happen today or yesterday. According to the article here, Russia warplanes repel Daesh attack in Deir Ezzord, eliminating 180 terrorists. states here that this happened, uh, the operation was between June 6th and the 8th. Uh, moreover, the Russian Aerospace Forces also destroyed 16 units of terrorists, automotive and armored vehicles, and ammunition depot during the air raids. As a result of the preemptive airstrikes of the Russian Aerospace Forces, June 6th through the 8th, Daesh field commanders were eliminated. Moreover, 180 militants were eliminated as well. And of course, the autos, automobiles and uh, different uh, armaments that they had were destroyed, according to uh, Sputnik News. But what here's what's really odd about the entire thing. It's because on Twitter here, as we reported to you originally, this was... Uh, of course, there's been several different groups that have already reported this. It was around that same time when the U.S. struck the pro-Syrian regime forces coming near Al-Tanf. As we can see here uh, on this particular video footage, it was first shared uh, about the, one of the U.S. strikes on the pro-Syrian government forces. Now that happened on multiple occasions already, three that we're aware of thus far, and also we found out that it wasn't long after that that the uh, Syrian forces too had also, in fact I believe that was on the 9th of June, uh, when the Syrian forces actually reached uh, al excuse me, the uh, Jordanian-Iraqi border. That's right here, June the 9th. When there was a celebration, the generals were talking about here, uh, Russian generals that is, was speaking about how that the Syrian military had made it to the Jordanian border, albeit because Russia was stopping the advance of ISIS. I think it was more a show of force. The United States knows exactly what's going on inside of Syria, and when they saw that Russia intervened and stopped the ISIS advancement and allowed the Syrian forces to reach the border of Iraq, something that, according to the Russian officials, U.S., Coalition forces were trying to stop the Syrians from gaining control of the Iraqi uh, border crossing there because the fact it goes straight to Baghdad. They do not want the Iraqis and Syrians to be able to align with one another, but seem to go just the opposite way. But we do have breaking news, though, that is just coming out as well. I-24 News International is reporting that four U.S. soldiers were killed by an Afghan soldier in an apparent inside attack. Unfortunately, to hear this for the sake of our American uh, friends and, uh, of course, being an American myself, to know that uh, American soldiers have died in Afghanistan. This is not the only time this has ever happened, but they are reporting here it was a second insider attack in a week occurring just as Trump debates over the deploying of more troops. At least four American soldiers were shot and killed by an allied Afghan commando at a base in northern Afghanistan on Saturday. Military officials said to Reuters, an Afghan soldier shot and killed four American troops inside the base, said Abu, uh, excuse me, Abdul Qa'ar Aram, spokesman for the Afghan army. We are investigating. U.S. military confirmed the incident but did not elaborate more uh, as to the casualties and the cause, uh, Reuters said. Very very disturbing news to hear about this. Uh, also, Putin says U.S. sanctions will complicate relations. Uh, this just came out today as well on I-24 America's uh, channel. Says the U.S. Senate on Thursday overwhelmingly passed tough sanctions on Russia over alleged election meddling. Well, you know, they might as well go ahead and pass sanctions on America as well because it was America that meddled in the Israeli election under President Obama. Uh, but anyway, it goes on to say that U.S. sanctions on Russia approved by the Senate will complicate the country's relations, Russian President Vladimir Putin said on TV in an interview Saturday. Of course, this will make Russia-U.S. relations more complex, he noted. Putin said in an, an excerpt from an interview due to air in full at 5 p.m. Uh, Russian one, uh, Russia 1 television uh, to this today. I think it is harmful, the Kremlin strongman, strongman said, while adding that it is premature to talk now about any response. Of course, as he mentioned in one of his Q&A uh, sessions that he did with the public just recently, 
He says those sanctions have harmed those putting on, on him far greater than it harms Russia. He mentioned how it was 50 to $52 billion that has cost Russia, whereas those placing the sanctions has cost them over $100 billion for doing exactly the same. Also, I ran across this one article here I thought it was rather enlightening here. Uh, it is from a website called medium.com. And no, it's not, uh, you know, in the soothsaying, I don't believe. But anyway, speaks about the history of the CIA's attempted coups in Syria and how they created ISIS. The CIA has a dark history of wanting to overthrow regimes, but none is more notorious than its constant plans to overthrow the Syrian regime. Uh, stands here as it, it, it isn't just the current Assad government the CIA has been trying to overthrow. Various Syrian presidents throughout history, far as, from as far back as March of 1949, Syria was under the rule of President Sakri al Kuwati. Kuwatli. Anyway, let me just play a portion of this for you here so you can hear what the, uh, the CIA agent was saying. Lots of things were done in the field, for example, plotting to overthrow uh, the Syrian government and others without the State Department being uh, very fully informed about what you're up to. The State Department didn't want to be informed in that particular instance. If it had been informed, it would have to have told us not to do it. And therefore, he didn't inform it. The State Department practically asked not to be informed in this case. We did inform the State Department. And uh, as you well, you read the book, uh, you know this, this case where uh, uh, simply we, we, it, we, it was headed to us that we had best shut up about what was happening in the country and if Hussein Zaim, uh, the case in point, you are talking about the Syrian case, yes. we were through the Syrian If uh, Hussein yes. Zaim wanted to have a coup and if his intention was to get rid of the corrupt uh, government and establish a democratic government, we should leave him alone and stay out of it. And that was the State Department policy that in fact you very largely organized, directed it, and you personally, but you were among the team who did it, organized and directed this coup. Exactly. Yes. And then when Secretary Dulles was in office, uh, you say that he was taking the high road, but the working levels of the State Department and the Pentagon were well advanced down the low road. That is a totally different policy. Uh, carrying on subsidiary policies almost totally inconsistent with the Secretary's. Did you think that's a, a useful way of conducting foreign policy? Keith, uh, I'm not going to make a moral judgment about this. You're asking me the way things are done, and that's what my book is about. My book is not about, uh, complaining. My book is not a great outcry about how things are done wrong or right with the American government. I'm simply describing the way things are done. It is true. Now, let me finish. It is true that in many cases we would sit around in our ethics of the State Department and we would have long discussions. Our government does not interfere in the internal affairs of a sovereign nation and we meant that from the bottom of our hearts. And then we'd say, but in this is one case where we have to. And so we had to try to decide how to do what it was we said was against our policy to do. And we did, in fact, interfere in internal affairs of many sovereign nations. I, uh, and, uh, I must say we don't do it anymore. I mean, but that was a time. Isn't that interesting? They don't do it anymore, but they do admit that they do do it. And it's very obvious from the policies of the U.S. today that hasn't changed much either, especially in the case of Syria. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Uh, do also apologize for the one video we removed there about the Dutch forces. That is the Holland forces uh, that are, are being deployed to Jordan to join the US and British coalition. I did make a mistake putting in the Danish uh, article there. I actually had an article, but it was from uh, December of 2016. They were speaking about the Dutch forces moving in uh, part of their uh, air military campaign into Jordan, but that was delayed. But we do have the inside information uh, that's been shared with us that the Dutch military from Holland is being deployed to Jordan to join the U.S. and British forces there. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.